of the Netherlands and Sweden, more of which anon. We'll hear from Dara Byrne ahead of the Cerebral Palsy World Cup as well. And we'll welcome all your texts and tweets too. That Off The Ball is where you can find us on Twitter and you can text us to 53106 for 30 cent. But the crux of tonight's show emanates from La Hinch on the eve of the Dubai Duty Free Irish Open, which gets underway tomorrow morning. Our two men in La Hinch at the moment are Nathan Murphy and Joe 13 Inches Malloy. Good evening to you both. Richie McCormack, thank you very much. What's all this about 13 inches, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> nearest the pin, Richie. Believe it or not, nearest the pin. 13 inches from the pin on the 8th. Was this an actual competition today, was it? The uh, Pro-Am this morning. Very good. Yeah. How'd you get on? Great, very good. Golf was patchy. My golf was patchy, but um, it's an amazing experience. And it is uh, blue skies and sunshine all the day. Very light breeze. Temperatures in the 20s. Big crowd and, uh, yeah, brilliant atmosphere all day, Nathan. You know, Joe, there are days, many of them on a Thursday, when the likes of Richie McCormick are doubters about golf and Golf Weekly and why we sort of push ourselves off into a corner of the office for a couple of hours every Thursday. And what's the point? Who cares? Who's listening? Mm. I tell you, it's worth it on days like this. It is sensational down here. It really is beautiful. Uh, Le Hinch Golf Club is just one of the most picturesque places you can imagine. And on a day like today, blue skies, like I said, so many holes, so many greens uh, jutting out over the coastline, La Hinge Beach uh, beneath us. It really is um, amazing. And there was a great atmosphere today, you know, big crowds. There are going to be big crowds across the week. In fact, speaking to one of the uh, media liaison people here, he was saying just to let people know, if you're thinking, looking out your window and saying it's quite nice outside, we might do a bit of a walk up on Saturday or Sunday. They're pretty close to selling out Saturday and Sunday and they will not let you in which will be the first time you can't just walk up and pay in since Port Rush back in 2012. So just to flag that with you, if you were thinking of coming along or bringing the kids, you don't want to be telling them, actually, we can't go in there. So that's just something to pay heed of. You'd probably be able to pay in tomorrow or Friday. I don't want to over-egg it, considering the tournament hasn't even started yet, but already you feel this could be one of the great Irish Opens because it has everything in the mix. Mm. And... Golf tournaments aren't just about the quality of the field and the winner. They add to it. Yeah. If you can get the drama of a McElroy at the K Club in 2016, and you think back to the great Irish Opens, the Carroll's Irish Opens during the 80 and Langer and Seve and all these, it feels as though the sun was shining. Here you have the weather, it seems, this yeah. week, because there have been some horrific weeks in terms of weather for the Irish Open. It feels as though it's going to be perfect, good temperatures. The course is as good as any on the Irish Open rota. Everybody who's played it absolutely raves about it. Normally, never mind in championship condition like it is. You've played it. You can tell us all about it. I walked the course earlier on, and you're just blown away by all the peaks and troughs and just the general dips and the blind shots, but also the town. And half the country has been here on stag parties or hen parties or on their summer holidays. It is just so close to the village it's a 30 second walk yeah. it is a party atmosphere the whole place has been pedestrianized it's set up for a weekend regardless of what happens on the course i think that people are going to remember totally agree totally agree there are two parallel tournaments going on there is the one that we all watch on television and in that case the absence of rory McIlroy is a massive body blow to use the phrase mcginley used if you were at the tournament yes it would be nice to have McIlroy here but really because golf is not the best spectator sport your experience is not going to be radically transformed by McElroy being here or not. It's about, as you said, the festival feel of the place. Uh, from the second green, you were about 200 metres from the village. As you said, a lot of red tape. To pedestrianise the streets, McGinley was saying a couple of months ago, is uh, not an easy thing to do. Businesses don't love it in some respects. Now, it's going to be just fine, mm. I reckon, for them here. And they have stages set up. There's going to be traditional music, different bands coming down. The Golf Channel in the States have set up a stage or a set in the town so you can imagine the drive time audiences over there seeing all this going on in the weather and uh, today you know I, like just after the perfect start it just felt as you said like a festival that is going to be the big cliche this week uh, pro-am celebrities I know you're a celeb watcher Nathan go on of the TV's uh, Joe Malloy hurling fraternity Ooh. we had Joe Canning playing left handed right just let that sit with you for a while Shane O'Donnell playing left handed Mm. So I don't know what's going on there. Keen Lynch and David Fitzgerald, a very good golfer. Very happy man, as you can imagine. Well, I think we need to raise some serious question marks about the handicap system, maybe throughout the entire country, but certainly here at Le Hinch this week. Keen Lynch was playing off 28. Yeah. 
Keen Lynch is a naturally gifted, one of the most naturally gifted sports people in the country. I think in fairness, having seen a picture or two of his swing, <laughs> we won't cast aspersions. Okay. Uh, GA Kieran Donahue and Tomas O'Shea. I'm going to play here at half past seven. So I was jammy enough to play in the Pro-Am and uh, I was with Tomas O'Shea and Luke Fitzgerald, also here of uh, rugby, and um, Kieran Donahue played. So I had a chat with them. They were in great form. So we'll play about 10, 15 minutes of that at uh, half seven. Keith Wood was playing, Paul O'Connell, Shane Byrne. If you're into your politics, Enda Kenny. I was talking to Enda Kenny. Big off the ball fan. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Enda Kenny. Well, he's from Mayo. Some people often describe it as Mayo FM. I've heard that. Enda Kenny said, often up in Dublin, driving back to Mayo, he'll stick it on with his son wow. in the car. So just bear that in mind I'd the next never, time. I'd never like to hear things like that. I know. I never like to think of people like that listening. So shout out to Enda if he's listening. Dick Spring was here as well. He's always at the Loves His Golf. And then, look, plenty more besides. Niall Horn was here. Brian McFadden, Keith Duffy, Conor Moore. All these kind of familiar faces. So that was the kind of vibe. And uh, people were enjoying it. And there were ice creams and kids having a good time. Uh, very relaxed as well, I would say. A bit more relaxed than previous Irish Opens for who knows what kind of reasons. So that's the kind of broad strokes uh, sense of today. It is all set up. Honestly, if you're in the area and you're thinking of coming along, we would uh, highly recommend it for a host of reasons. Uh, The course itself, it's just amazing. Mm. I mean, old Tom Morris came across it first. The thing is just basically a ready-made golf course. The undulations, the dunes, it's just just meant to be a golf course. And then Alistair McKenzie, who you may have heard of Augusta out there, Cypress Point, all these places, he put his stamp on it. So, I mean, it's just uh, golfing royalty and it's an amazing condition. Playing with Ryan Fox today, one of the longest players on their tour. We finished fourth in the pro, as you can see there, Nathan. Not bad. 26 under par. That's Russell Knox. Oh, I saw that. You played with Ryan Fox. Close, okay. But you did finish <laughs> We finished fourth quite well. Yeah, we did all right in the so, morning. So but um, he hits driver, he hit driver in a load of holes. And Shane Larry said yesterday you can get aggressive and you can hit lots of drivers. So he was hitting driver in a huge number of holes and uh, it was in brilliant condition. So um, it's going to be good. If people are looking at tea times tomorrow, what are we looking at? Yeah, so as you say, it, the expectation is there's going to be huge crowds here for all four days, particularly if the weather keeps up like it is and there's a park and ride system when we were driving down. Funnily enough, Paul McGinley spoke a lot about bringing it out of Dublin, bringing it out of the capital city and the festival atmosphere. It's actually a great location. It's an hour from Galway. It's an hour from Limerick. You've got two huge hubs, two huge population hubs. You can come straight here, and it's a perfect location. So bright and early if you're up, 10 past 8, first of the big heavy hitters of the Irish. Darren Clark is going to be out with Thomas Bjorn and Stephen Gallagher. Then half 8, this is a nice one, Gray McDowell, Martin Keimer, and Torbjörn Olsen. Yeah, three majors between them. 8.40, Shane Lowry. Tommy Fleetwood and Russell Knox so you have the defending champion Shane Lowry who will get the biggest crowd I'd imagine following him tomorrow morning and what a six months he's had the best six months of his career he says he's in great form isn't he Larry at the moment interestingly I think his record here in the um, amateur days isn't so good but so they play the south of Ireland here every year and Gray McDowell is a former winner of the South of Ireland right. back in 2001. Darren Clark won it. Potter Carrington has won a big amateur tournament here yeah. as well. So they all know this tournament, and all McGinley. the Irish players, and McGinley, of yeah. course, uh, as well. Bob McGinley not actually playing this week with his hosting duties. Um, so they'll play alongside Tommy Fleet, which is having a sort of up and down season after a pretty sensational 2018. But Tommy Fleetwood, because of the Jesus like status and look, I think is one of the most familiar faces now oh, in golf just some they superstar l- they let you in afterwards into the nice fancy place to have some food and Tommy Fleetwood was obviously in the morning program as well and he was getting a coffee I just wanted to go over and say Tommy I love you <laughs> but I didn't I could be I, Francesco when he's not around just think we could be friends I could be that guy <laughs> uh, so that'll be certainly that 8.30 you've got McDowell you've got Lowry Fleetwood Knox interestingly Shane Lowry his caddy Bo Martin isn't here this week mm. his best mate Daryl Lernahan is caddying for him so something himself, slightly yeah. different so they're the early starts if you come bright and early if you're coming a little bit later or just hanging around for the day 10 past 1 Potter Carrington Ian Poulter Tyrrell Hatton a lot of people will obviously be watching Harrington. There is a very tempting group at 20 past one. John Ram, Louis Westhazen, and Matt Wallace. So John Ram, a phenomenon, 2017 champion, wins everywhere. Wins if it's sunny, wins if it's not sunny, wins on links, wins on parkland, can do everything. He's going to win majors, 100%. Talked about how much he loves Ireland. He's must watch. Louis Westhazen maybe has the best swing in golf, or right up there, and he's not a big man. 
an amazing player and a major winner. And Matt Wallace, at some stage in the round, will lose his mind <laughs> and berate his caddy. He will scream in his caddy's face. And that is worth seeing as well. Yeah, and his caddy, if that happens, it'll be interesting because his caddy, Dave McNeely, is an Irish man. I'm sure everybody, most golf fans are aware of the dynamic. Yeah. Matt Wallace is a bit of a hothead. He's He describes it, I think, as a sort of born winner that he's pushing himself to the next level and he's having a sensational season. He leads the race to Dubai standings at the moment, but everybody felt, to think, over the last couple of weeks he maybe overstepped the mark somewhat. Mm. I watched Louis Westhazen for about half an hour on the range area and I spoke to him as well because he, too, has a very good link with Ireland. He won the Irish Amateur Championship at Royal Dublin back in 2002 and obviously loves links having won the Open Championship at St. Andrews. But as you say... Just the sweetest <laughs> of sweetest strikes. Yeah. There's there's no more greater juxtaposition in all of sport, I think, than standing at the range on the day of the Pro-Am. Yeah. Where you have amateurs standing next to the greatest players no. in the world. And there was a couple of people standing beside Louis Westhazen who, I don't know if they were overawed, but were seriously struggling with their game. Yeah. I was trying to think about this earlier, and I guess... It's overstating things. I can't work it out fully. Maybe people will text in and give it thought, but maybe it is because you see amateurs next to pros. But I was going to say, it's hard to think of a sport where the difference between even very, very good amateur players and professionals is just so vast. Like, you just watch, for instance, Ryan Fox hit the ball today. It's just like nothing I've ever even come close to seeing from any of the amazing even amateur mm. golfers in my local club who were off scratch or whatever. I just think if you watched um, a really good soccer player take a penalty, it wouldn't be you know, unrecognisable from professional football or strike a ball. It wouldn't be unrecognisable. I appreciate, yes, there'd be a massive difference. And I, look, gymnastics, I'm sure there's a massive difference. Mm. But honestly, I said to Ryan Fox at one point, I just genuinely don't understand how you're all so good. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's unbelievable. I'm out there hacking away a few times a week. Everybody's obsessed. With, you know, lots of amateurs get obsessed with golf. It's so hard to get good at it. And did he talk to you? Was he nice and friendly? There was. Uh, he's a lovely fella. Yeah, Grand Fox's son, mm. oh, the All Black. Um, so yeah, really down to earth, very laid back fella, and um, hits the ball a bazillion miles. Was second last year. Yeah. He's not in the best of form at the moment, but uh, was second last year. So. Uh, he was in good form. So that 20 past one group, Ram, yeah. West, Hayes and Wallace. Ram is the highest ranked player here this week. He's 11th in the world. Funnily enough, yeah. there's actually more world ranking points on offer this week than there were last year when McElroy was here. There's more players in the top 50, the top 100 this year. Because yeah. uh, you have the likes of Ram, Fleetwood, West, Hayes and Wallace. Shane Lowry back very high up among the rankings. Uh, then at 1.30, you have Lee Westwood, Paul Dunn and Eddie Pepper. I'm sure will get a good crowd as well. Paul Dunn obviously struggling with his game yeah. at the moment. So they're the sort of times around half past eight, around about half past one. But again... Pick a spot. And that's the great thing about Lynx Golf, particularly a course like this. Yeah. As you say, the undulations mean there's loads of places where you can get up high in a hill yes. and just sit there for the day. That would be my advice, actually. Yeah, Treat it as a bit of a picnic mm. because it's, I, it might be tough to follow groups around this terrain, I think. It's more of a hangout in a spot kind of day and then go to the driving range and see people. It could be a bit of a slog uh, walking after people. So, um, yeah, as you said, 13 of the world's top 50 are here. We have a ton of major winners. The um, bookies see it as John Ram as the man to beat followed very closely by Tommy Fleetwood Matt Wallace a lot of people are given a big chance to Shane Larry certainly has a chance as well then you've got Louis Westays and who we mentioned Danny Willett Masters champion coming back into form Martin Keimer multiple major winner is here a great name to have here Rafa Cabrera Gray McDowell is in the mix he's um, had a bit of a resurgence Hao Tung Lee a really good player mm -hmm. if you see him coming along Ian Poulter here and down we go Russell Knox Torbjorn Olison uh, likes playing an Irish Open and we've had a good run of quality winners because yeah. when you look through the history of the Irish Open like any European tour event you get the outsiders like Soren Kelson or Mikko Willen and Simon Dyson Richard Finch but the la you look at the last three years Rory yeah. McIlroy at the K Club John Ram at Port Stewart and then last year Russell Knox who was very much a top 50 in the world player winning up at Ballyliffin mm. So the plan uh, as we hand back to Richie is around half past seven. We'll play a chat with Tomas O'Shea, Luke Fitzgerald and Kieran Donaghy, who were in very good form uh, this morning. Three of them chewing the fat about their respective golf games and uh, what they made of the day. And then Nathan has caught up with Padraig Carrington and Graham McDowell. 
so we'll hear what they have to say as well. So that's the general uh, scene set here, Richie. We've tried not to slurp in our ice creams as we did this. Oh, dear God. I'll let you get back to stalking Tommy Fleetwood, which uh, appears to be the reason you're down there mainly. Uh, cheers, lads. More from Lehinch over the course of the next half hour or so. To the day's news, and the Netherlands meet Sweden this evening to decide who'll meet the United States in Sunday's Women's World Cup final. Dutch striker Vivian Miedema says the game has grown incredibly quickly back home in the past few years. I think I started playing the national team in 2013 and my first couple of games were in front of maybe 500,000 people and yeah in the build up towards the Euros we already had more people in the stadiums maybe five or six thousand and you could just see in training as well that and the league level in Holland got better but also the level at the national team got a lot better and especially when a lot of players started to move abroad. Um, I think I moved abroad when I, in 2014 already. So you could see that our national team became a lot stronger and obviously the Euros have helped us like a lot. But um, yeah, it's been something that's been growing over the last couple of years and obviously with the Euros and now with the World Cup, it will just make bigger jumps than before. Yeah, kickoff in Lyon is at eight o'clock. Novak Djokovic has resumed his quest to retain his Wimbledon men's singles title. He won the first set of his second round match with Dennis Kudla on centre court and is 4-2 up in the second set. Three-time Grand Slam winner Stan Wawrinka was beaten in five sets today by the 21-year-old American Riley Apelka. Fernando Verdasco beat Kyle Edmund in a five-set marathon to set up a third round meeting with giant killer Thomas Fabiano. The Italian felled 6 foot 11 Ivo Karlovic today after knocking out 7 seed Stefano Tsitsipas on Monday while 10 seed Karen Kashinov beat Feliciano Lopez in 4 sets and he'll meet another Spaniard in round 3 in the form of Roberto Bautista Agut. Simona Halep has set up a third round meeting with former Australian Open champion Victoria Azarenka. 7 seed Halep a 3 set victory today over her fellow Romanian Mihaela Buzarnescu while Azarenka beat Isla Tomjanovic for the loss of just 2 games. 3rd seed Karolina Pliskova and eight seed Alina Svitolina were among the others moving through to round three today. And still to come this evening, Venus Williams conqueror, the 15 year old Coco Goff, takes on 2017 semi finalist at SW19, Magdalena Rabarakova. Lots of transfer news circling around Atletico Madrid today. Rodri on the verge of becoming Manchester City's record signing. Atletico say his 70 million euro release clause has been paid to La Liga by City's representatives. The 22 year old midfielder has won six international caps for Spain. Atletico Atletico already signed Marcos Llorente as a replacement for Rodri from Real Madrid last month, while the club today also confirmed the signing of Mexican international Hector Herrera shortly after confirming Rodri's departure. And in the past quarter of an hour, they've just made Joao Felix the third most expensive player of all time. 126 million euro has been paid to Benfica for the services of the Portuguese international teenager. Joao Felix, now an Atletico Madrid player. And Dave Connell says he would like the Republic of Ireland women's job. The position in the vacant of course two months from the start of the European Championship qualifiers following Colin Bell's departure to Huddersfield Connell is currently in Naples where a Lauren Kelly wonder strike gave the Republic of Ireland a 1-0 win over Holders Brazil at the World University Games and Connell told off the Balls League of Ireland podcast he'd like a crack at the senior job It's a job that I'd love but you know there's obviously a lot, a lot of good managers out there and we'll have to see what way it goes if I get it, you know, I'll do my best. If if I don't, I'll knuckle down like I did the last time and, and um, keep plugging away with the underage teams um, and trying to get the best the best out of them and produce players then to go on to play for the senior team. Lots more from Connell and Jamie Moore and his cast of thousands on the Off The Ball podcast on offtheball.com. And Off The Ball, in partnership with Free Now, is hosting a very special event on the 4th of July, that's tomorrow, in the Alex Hotel, and we want you to be there as well. We're going to be talking about leadership in business and sport in the company of Paul McGrath, Yes, indeed. Jamie Heaslip, performance coach for the Dublin Herners, Cleana O'Connor, and our very own Andy Lee. It's an exclusive all-fair event, so the only way that you can witness it is by being there. Check out offtheball.com forward slash events to get your tickets to the event with free now business, getting your business where it needs to be. Up next, we're back in La Hinch with Joe and Nathan. We'll hear from Kieran Donnie, Padraig Harrington, Tomas O'Shea, Graham McDull, and Luke Fitzgerald. Down to business on News Talk. Thanks to Bank of Ireland, supporting enterprise locally through the National Enterprise Town Awards. Get cash back on your everyday spend with the Avant Card Reward Plus Credit Card. Avant Card DAC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. 
Remember when we asked what a gazebo was, and you said it could be a lightweight garden shelter, a swift shelter, pop-up tent, marquee, or party tent? Well, at omaracamping.com, we now custom brand industrial shelters for clubs, organizations, and businesses with your very own logo. And guess what it's called? Yep, it's a branded gazebo. Sorry to add to the confusion. Whatever you call a gazebo, we still call a happy customer. omaracamping.com for tents and accessories. For every event, omaracamping.com have a tent.